we live in dazzling times. So much is happening, and at the same time, too little is happening. The earth keeps warming, nature keeps losing ground, and we can't seem to stop it. We all know there is just too much bullshit, too much greenwashing, too much we washing. We need true, real change, and we need it fast. But is that possible at all? Over the past years, we've seen a global financial crisis, a pandemic, a war, floods, droughts, heat waves. But time and time again, turbulence fades away, and life settles in its old tracks, soothing in a way. It doesn't have to be that way. We know that societies don't always go back to business as usual. Big transformations have happened in the past. So how did they do it? Can we learn anything from that? Sometimes it seems easy. A leader steps up, like Gandhi, changes the course of history. Beautiful. But you know what? It never happens out of the blue. It only happens when the time is ripe, like it was before the French Revolution, and like it was before a very special period in American history, the Progressive Epoch. Have you heard of that? By the end of the 19th century, industrialization had left a few people in the US very, very rich. But the vast majority in pretty bad conditions, working under poor conditions in a country that was getting increasingly polluted. And it looked like as if there was no way out because the politicians were corrupt and bought by the small, rich clique. But there was a way out. A groundswell of social change. That's how it started. People started sharing views of what was really wrong and how they wanted the future to look like. And those views were so broadly shared in society that the three candidates for president all shared basically the same program. Change had become an accident in waiting. From that point on, they got a good tax system for redistributing wealth, environmental laws, regulations against corruption. The Americans reinvented their society. So what's the lesson? For me, the lesson is that it isn't about leadership. It isn't about leaders. It's about the slow change in values, in worldviews, the slow change that in the end makes transformation an accident in waiting. Surprising, because when you look at the status quo, it tends to look so solid that you think change will never happen. But that impression can be wrong. After all, some decades ago, we never thought that smoking would disappear from public places, one country after the other. Landslides can happen when you least expect them. So, what about now? What about now? We are talking about serious things that need to change, big change. Can we do that? 
I don't know, I bought an electric car. Does that help? Does it help to recycle our plastic? Does it help that we find better ways to clean the water, to produce crops and meat? Of course, it's all positive. It's all making a difference. But it's just going so slowly. And in the meantime, the planet keeps warming. Nature keeps losing ground. I agree that things look gloomier like every day. But don't you think that change is in the air too? I think it is. Of course, change doesn't necessarily go into the right direction. Tension, disagreement is the basis for change. But where does it lead? There are, of course, incentives for politicians to cross eco-fascist narrative. You know, just close the border and we'll have our beautiful little green spot forever. There are incentives for companies to block change. But at the same time, companies and politicians can also be powerful actors of change in the right direction, of positive change. So what does it take? What does it take to change the tide? In the end, the thing that really matters is just the way we see the world, our values. And all those little things we do, like buy a vegan burger, Go by bike. You're all sending a small signal, Snick, signal that you know I care. And all those little signals are giving tiny pushes to the cloud, the cloud of values that shapes our worldview. And in the end, that may matter more than the actual effect of recycling my plastic. That's what it is about. I think all those little things allow society to shuffle very gradually towards a tipping point. I said the word, a tipping point where change becomes self-reinforcing, where it becomes sweeping. Thank you. But this is just the beginning. <laughs> this is just the beginning. Now the question is, what does it matter for us in Wageningen? This is the opening of the academic year. So what is our role? What is our role? Well, you know, just as some actors are powerful blockers of change, others are powerful makers of change. Movie makers, teachers, scientists. And we've just seen a glimpse of what scientists are doing in Wageningen. A tiny glimpse, there is so much. It makes us feel good, it makes me feel good. But the reason, another reason, for me to be optimistic, an even more important reason. And that's, sounds like a cliche, but that's our students, our children. It sometimes happens that I feel that a student is far ahead of me in thinking about all those complex things than I am. 
and it always makes my day. It's also no secret that we have pretty amazing and dedicated teachers here in Wageningen. The best university in a row in I don't know how many years you'll hear that later, or probably. Inspiring the students, we say about those teachers. But you know, inspiration can go in two directions. Of course, we can drive each other absolutely nuts sometimes, but that's good, right? That's the tension we need. But I've also seen many times that the student is inspiring a teaching teacher, is inspiring a scientist. What a beautiful, bubbling community full of tensions and controversies and inspiration we have. Let's make it a fantastic academic year. We have no time to lose. Let's enjoy each other and let's give those little pushes that we need to the world's view in order for our grandchildren, their grandchildren to thrive on a beautiful, beautiful planet. Thank you.